Hey, you, Windows user developing with Unreal. Yes, you. Do you hate Visual Studios? Think it's slow, unresponsive, and a memory hog? Do you want to free up your PC's resources so you can build your projects faster? Would you much rather use Vim, Sublime, Emacs, Emacs. <laughs> or other text editors? Well then, this episode of Indie to Indie, the series in which I cover some practical advice I have for my fellow indie developers, is for you. And I do mean Windows. Linux devs are already eaten good with CLangD and mode equals CLang compilation database, outdoor equals project directory. I know the title of this video specifies Vim and Emacs specifically, but really this video is editor agnostic as long as your editor of choice has LSP support. I'm talking to you, Acme Enjoyers. Of course, it's going to take a bit of know-how, but really, I think if you prefer a text editor over an IDE, this video will be simple enough for you. I'm going to put the cart before the horse for a moment and just say I wrote a Python script that does the stuff I'm going to cover here for you automatically, because some parts, especially the LSP integration, need to be automated in order to be usable. So, it's no secret, Visual Studios is blown. And while Unreal offers the ability to use VS Code and other IDEs, we can get even lighter. And while I don't have positive thoughts about IDEs in general, they do have some nice things that speed up development, like code completion, syntax highlighting, symbol navigation, error and warning markers, and most importantly, building your project. However, we can get all of those without an IDE. We'll focus on the last one first because it's been solved for a while. If you ever looked through Visual Studio's logs while it's compiling your projects, you may have noticed that it doesn't actually use Visual Studio's to build your project, but rather the build command invokes Unreal Build Tool, which then goes about building your project. Alex Forsyth covers this in his own video that served as my own Road to Damascus moment that very much served as inspiration for this video as well. I linked the original in the description. It's great and covers things like the Unreal build process that I'm just completely glossing over here. But the takeaway is that we can just write some batch scripts to recreate the processes that build the editor and launch it. So that's one down for features to go. Now, you could write these batch scripts yourself or using the Python script I mentioned earlier, you could either create a new Unreal project with said batch files or add them to an already existing project. It also creates a generate batch script and a clangd underscore flags file that we'll be using in the next section, so don't delete them. Now with some batch files in hand, you could just write code in any text editor, run the build script, use the output of that to fix any errors that stop it from building, and finally repeat that process until you build the editor successfully. But to really accelerate the development process, any proper replacement should have the first four features of an IDE that I listed. After all, it's better to catch errors while writing code instead of compiling it. And to do that, we're going to have to get a bit technical. But before that, go to this URL, scroll all the way down to the LSP client section. It's basically at the bottom. Keep scrolling. Look for your text editor of choice. If it's not listed, then unless you find some repo that implements an LSP client for it, unfortunately, it's just not happening. To get those nice features, we're going to have to use the language server protocol, or LSP for short. The language server will automatically provide code completion, error and warning markers, and etc. to your text editor. Now, I know I just said server, but don't worry. We won't be setting up a website or anything like that. Your text editor will launch the language server in the background by itself and automatically connect to it as a client, which is the language server protocol. So first step, crack open the Visual Studio installer. I know you have it. And choose the modify option for your current Visual Studio install. Select the individual components tab and search for LLVM. Then select the boxes for both C++ CLang compiler for Windows and MS build support for LLVM toolset. We're going to need both of them, I think. Then go ahead and modify your installation of Visual Studios. This is going to add clang d to your microsoft visual studio directory 
It's in there, but you're gonna have to dig a bit. We'll be using CLangD as our LSP server. Now, you may already have a different CLangD, and I tested a couple, but for Unreal projects on Windows, I only got Microsoft's CLangD working properly. You should be able to find CLangD at Program Files x86, Microsoft Visual Studio 2022, or whatever you're using, Build Tools, VC, Tools, LLVM, x64, bin clangd.exe. Going back to that list from earlier, if your editor doesn't have native LSP support, install and set up whatever you need to. Note, you'll have to set up your editor to use the Microsoft clangd that you just installed. I use Emacs. Emacs, what? <laughs> which may or may not be a text editor, so I use LSP mode. And this is what setting up the LSP package looks like for me. As you can see, I'm not setting my CLangD executable here, since I also have the msys2 CLangD which I use. So instead, I change it specifically for Unreal projects in a dir locals file. It's been a hot second since I used Vim as my daily driver, but I'm pretty certain you can do something similar if you have a different CLangD already living in your path. Now that we have have our text editor set up to use an LSP server. We just activate it and, well, it doesn't work. You have to create a compile underscore commands.json database. As you can probably guess from the name, this is a list of commands that tells CLangD how the code is compiled, which in turn allows our text editor to do code completion, error and warning markers, and the like. So how do we get a compile commands JSON file? Well, if you used that Python script I wrote, just run the generate batch script. Otherwise, it's a little complicated, but basically you generate generate project files for a VS Code project, then you copy that JSON file into compile commands and you modify entries with the appropriate CLangD flags. I told you not to delete that. If you want to know what's going on, I really do advise just reading the Python script I wrote. And I do know Unreal Build Tool has the ability to generate a compile commands JSON file, but it doesn't work with CLangD, so we have to do something else. But with the compile commands JSON, everything will work as intended. You just have to remember to rewrite generate.bat each time you add source files to your project. So if any of you were uncertain about this Python script that I wrote, I hope the last bit sold you. It's a Python 3 script, so you do need that of course, but other than that, you can download or clone the repo, see the description for the link, enter the appropriate values in the config.ini file, here are mine, then add the directory to your path. It's a command line batch script, but it's simple. You can use the P option to create a new project with a given name in an empty directory, and the A option to add the batch files and the clangd underscore flags file to an existing Unreal project. After that, just run generate to generate the compile commands, build to build the editor, and editor to launch the editor. Really simple. I suggest running them from a terminal, and if you're using a command prompt instead of PowerShell, you can run build and editor to run the build script and then launch the editor if the build finished successfully. I myself created a custom minor mode for Emacs so I can run the commands from within it with a custom keybind. I specifically made it so that way there are background processes that never appear unless one of them finishes unsuccessfully and running the generate.bat command restarts the LSP if I have it running. Of course, now that we're unshackled from Visual Studios, we'd also like to be able to create source files without having to create them from within the Unreal editor. Unreal Code has a bunch of repetitive boilerplate, so I just turned it all into snippets, and you should too. I have snippets that allow me to make actors and components super quick. I just have to remember to regenerate the compile command so my LSP server works with the new files. So with that out of the way, I'll demonstrate everything coming together to show you how you could be developing in Unreal. This will be a minimal example, but I think you'll see the point. So I'll switch back to my regular font size and regular theme and start coding.
And look at that, I got something up and running. Final question, what about debugging? You caught me. If I need an actual debugger, I still use Visual Studios. I know Emacs has a debugging mode, but eh, usually I'm aggressive enough with my logging and rubber ducking to know what the problem is without a debugger. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. I definitely wasted a lot of time in Visual Studios, so I hope this gives you more time to devote to actual game dev instead of waiting for an IDE. As always, thank you for watching, I appreciate your time, and I hope you have a good day. If you liked the video, please give it a like, and if you want more of whatever I do next, please subscribe. I read every comment I get, so in particular, if this script isn't working for you, you can comment here, or in the GitHub repo, or in the Discord server, dedicated to this channel. See the description for links to both the repo and the server. Unfortunately, it's only me testing it at the moment, so if I don't hit any bugs, then I can only assume it's okay for everybody else, when really it might not be at all. But this was a very brass tacks video, so let's unwind with the baking segment. So no more palmiers, we're back to sourdough. And this is just, you know, this is a classic, nice little ear, nice bit of flour. I think Oh, right, right, right. This is, um, yeah, I think this is when, uh, yeah, this is after I got my new, uh, my double Dutch oven. So I still got flour in, on it instead of, because with my old Dutch oven, I would just spritz it with water and like any flour on the surface would like gel up and, you know, make a nice shellac when it bakes. But this is afterwards. And if we take a look inside after I did the cross section, yeah, just good old sourdough, you know? It's good. It's good. You know, it's I've talked about a lot of sourdough in this uh, on this channel. So really uh, <laughs> running out of things to say, but that's a nice crust formation. This might be this is I still believe this is before my uh, my no need testing arc. And let me just say no need. It can work. You got to make it work, but it can work. And uh, let's look at the. Oh, yeah, this is the other loaf. This one's um. This one looks a bit more blonde than the first one, and unfortunately, you know, I don't, I don't have any notes for these breads, uh, so I can only assume that I made them about like 80% hydration. If I just had to guess, and you know, I do a cold ferment, but on that, you know, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So you know, not really much to say, um, but so I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it here. There's not much to say. So I mean, they're nice looking bread, and you know, I always use my own starter. So I'm going to use the classic sign off here without guilt because I actually did use yeast this time. Not just not just butter, not just pounds of butter and sugar. Yeah, I used yeast. So the sign off. The yeast in the air is free. So go out there and bake. It's delicious. It's nutritious. It's good for you. And it makes a great gift to show people that you appreciate them. And I appreciate all of you. Thank you. And I will see you next time.